deep gorges, narrow valleys and high peaks, Switzerland is famous for its Alps. And Liebherr telescopic crawler cranes are at home even here. Clausen has two LTR 1060 cranes which it uses to build ski lifts, weather stations and railway tunnels high up in the mountains. The crawler cranes have to tackle gradients of up to 40% and journeys of several kilometers to get to these sites. It's a real test of the machine, material and operator. A warm welcome from Eyingen to our last upload edition of 2020. It's really impressive what our LTR cranes can do even at high altitude. And here is something else impressive, the number 600. This year we delivered the 600th LTM 1500-8.1. This makes the crane the best-selling large crane in history. The first one was sold 20 years ago. Joachim, did you ever think that we would get to such a high number? No, we had absolutely no idea that it would get that high. Although the LTM 1500 had everything going for it, its two telescopic booms with boom lengths of 50 and 84 meters made it absolutely unique. But at the start of the development work, we were not really very happy with its lifting capacity values in telescopic mode. At the time, we had just introduced a new program, which meant I was very highly motivated. But I can remember something which our technical director, Dr. Hammer, said at the time. When I showed him the table of lifting capacities, he said he was not at all happy with it, and sent me straight back to the drawing board. Your target at the time was to build the best eight-axle crane in the world, and the plan was to build 15 of them per year. Today we're significantly above that level, so what were the challenges? The special feature of the LTM 1500 was the fact that it had two boom lengths of 50 and 84 meters. At the time, 50 meters was standard for a telescopic crane in this lifting capacity class, but 84 meters was a world record for a telescopic mobile crane. We were only able to achieve this extreme length by using the new Overloid boom design, but of course nobody had any experience with it back then. We had to calculate each section of the telescope using the sophisticated computer-aided finite element method. The computing times were immense. A single load case took 18 hours at the time. Today the computer will do the same work in just five minutes. Thanks to faster computers and better calculation methods. Then along came spatial y guying. What happened there? The spatial guying method produced a significant increase in lifting capacities particularly for long telescopic booms with lattice sections fitted to them. Firstly, we had to gain some experience with the new guying system. That meant conducting a whole host of tests at the test site. It became clear relatively quickly that the test measurements were not the same as the calculations, which meant that we had to introduce tolerances. These meant that we had to calculate the boom strength four times, which also meant four times the computing time. This new boom configuration made the LTM 1500-8.1 a technological pioneer, and we learned a great deal from it. Igva, how many hours of your life have you spent calculating the data for the LTM 1500? Well, of course, I worked on other projects as well, but I always found myself coming back to preparing special tables for the 1500. I suppose I worked on it full time for five or six years, and I still get inquiries about this crane. They're really incredible figures, and a crane that's been part of our lives for decades. Joachim, this living legend is now going to be replaced by its successor, the LTM 1650-8.1. What are your thoughts at the end of this crane's life? The first thing, of course, is the crane's performance data. But the main thing is the fact that we never stopped working on developing the crane. We also managed to satisfy some exotic customer wishes, which over time became selling points for other customers. We did a great deal right with this crane. Well, let's hope that in 20 years' time we can say the same thing about its successor. Thank you very much, you two. When we talk about our cranes, we often like to use jargon, sometimes unintentionally. And often, although this jargon is fairly widely known, very few people actually know what it means. So today, we'll be explaining the load sensing system. Every crane has a drive unit. Its power is transferred to one or more pumps and the transmission. In a mobile crane, the power generated by the diesel engine is transferred to the various crane units by the hydraulic system for hoisting work. In other words, for example, to the hoist unit, the slewing unit, or the luffing unit. 
The hydraulic system has the task of distributing the power to the crane units as efficiently as possible. None of the units must run too quickly or too slowly. The hydraulic pressure must be sufficiently high to ensure that none of the units stops. Hydraulic systems in various forms can be used for this purpose. One of them is the so-called load sensing hydraulic system. Load sensing simply means feeling the load. It's often abbreviated to LS system. A hydraulic pump with an adjustable delivery volume is used in the LS system. The maximum operating pressure is reported to the pump's controller by all the crane units through a chain of non-return valves. This is known as the LS pressure. The controller adjusts the delivery rate of the pump so that it delivers precisely the correct hydraulic pressure and precisely the correct delivery volume to achieve the speeds required by the operator. This satisfies the main objective of not generating excess hydraulic energy, which then simply has to be throttled back. So the LS system is also a major help in reducing fuel consumption. However, for more than one crane movement, there is another difficulty. Unless additional precautions are taken in the LS system, the majority of the oil from the pump would be discharged through the path of least resistance to the crane movement with the lowest operating pressure. This crane movement would then operate excessively quickly, while the unit with the highest load pressure could initially actually stop. The speeds of the various systems would then affect each other. However, that's not what the crane operator has set the crane to do, and is therefore undesirable. To ensure that the speeds are as required by the operator, an additional hydraulic element must be positioned upstream of each valve, a so-called pressure compensator. It closes when the pump pressure rises and opens when the pump pressure falls. This enables it to compensate for pressure differences in the hydraulic system like a scale and prevent the crane units having a negative effect on each other. Trawler cranes are large and impressive and draw large crowds at sites. Our latest model, the LR1800-1.0, is already in action in many countries around the world. Unveiled at our customer days in 2018 as a powerful industrial crane, it's proven to be a real workhorse on sites everywhere. It now has a brand new boom configuration for jobs in the wind industry. Let's take a look at it straight away in action. Crane contractor Colonia tested its new LR1800-1.0 for the first time at a wind farm near Maasberg in the Sauerland region of Germany. Around 70 transport vehicles brought the new crane, with its wind configuration, to the site. After an erection time of just under six days, it then towered into the air with a 171-meter main boom and a 12-meter jib. In the future, the crane should be erected in just four days, and a great deal of work has been done to make this possible. For example, the hydraulic erection support facility, which levels the central crawler section using the outrigger cylinders before the superstructure is added, is hydraulically controlled from the turntable. This means it doesn't require a special unit for this purpose. And the quick connection enables the superstructure to be bolted to the central crawler section quickly and safely. The V-frame with Vario tray also saves a good deal of time. The 400 tons of derrick ballast are only required to raise the main boom. After this, the center pallet is simply unbolted, as 80 tons of suspended ballast plus the central and turntable ballast are enough for the hoisting work. No restacking, no adding or removing ballast. The wind and weather and the delays, which are not unusual when erecting a prototype system like this wind turbine, mean that the crane operator's patience is often tested to the limit. But the hoists themselves were completed impeccably. For the heaviest components of the turbine, whose hub height is at an imposing 160 meters, the crane had to position gross loads of 81 tons at a dizzying height with total accuracy. The operators had to concentrate very hard and use a great deal of fingertip control. And the two men from Colonia demonstrated plenty of both in their comfortable cab. Since I have had the Liebherr crane, my eyes have been opened. We are delighted to hear it. That brings us to the end of our fourth and final edition for 2020. We'll be back in January with a new 5-axle all-terrain crane. See you then!